Hello, it's Erin from Catawba Science Center and I want to share with you a little bit about weather and some things that you can do at home to learn about it. One of the main things that you need to know about wa uh, weather is the water cycle. And here's an easy demonstration you can do at home to help you learn about the water cycle. You just need a bowl of water, a sponge, and something to hold a sponge with. I have also a pipette that allows you to suck stuff up. You could use a straw or you could just use a spoon. Anything to just get that water out of the bowl up into this, the sponge. So this bowl of water is representing an, a lake or an ocean or somewhere that is a body of water. And whatever you're going to use to get the water up is going to be representing evaporation. So you're imagining this air is, uh, this water is turning into a gas vapor and rising up into the sky as evaporation and then when it gets high enough in the sky where it's a little bit cooler it will condense and turn back into um, a liquid but at a certain point it can just still stay up in the sky um, and gather into a cloud but when the cloud gets enough moisture in the, or in the when the air gets enough moisture in the air that air that water will start to drip out and we call that precipitation so you've got evaporation condensation and precipitation. There are four types of precipitation. Rain like we have here, snow, sleet, and hail. Um, there are lots of tools that you can use to help you keep an eye on the weather. There is a really good tool that we can use to help show how much it has rained overnight or in a given amount of time and it's called a rain gauge. So if it rains It'll fill the cup up and it has numbers on the side that allow you to see how much it's rained. In this case, it's about 23 millimeters. Usually that'd be in inches, so it'd be a little bit easier for you to understand how much it is. So, a rain gauge. You can also use one of these tools. You've probably seen these on the tops of things, tops of buildings or tops of... Um, I've even seen them on cars. Those uh, tornado chasing cars sometimes have an anemometer on top. But there are these cups that catch the air, the wind in them, and they start to spin. And this was an old school anemometer that you would need to count how many times the red one goes around the circle in a certain, or and count the time. But we have a lot more um, sophisticated anemometers these days that just have the cup and then they are digital and you get to read them and you don't even have to go outside. Okay, here's one a lot of people uh, say looks like a clock and it's called a barometer and it tells us the air pressure or how heavy the air is. Um, and you can actually kind of predict what the weather will be in the next couple days based on this. If it's low, there will probably be um, poor weather like storms and rain or if the air pressure is high, it will probably be nice weather in the next couple days so it has a little picture of a sunshine there. I bet you cannot guess what tool you might use to use to measure the amount of snow that has fallen in a certain amount of time. Probably with all these things, you're probably thinking something really hard. You've probably never seen it, but you have. It'd just be a ruler. <laughs> just go out in your snow boots and stick a ruler in the snow and see how high it comes. It's just in inches. And a really cool weather instrument is a thermometer. Um, you can see here we've got the Celsius side and the Fahrenheit side in America. We would typically use Fahrenheit to tell the, th the temperature of the weather outside. And there's some important numbers on here, down here. Uh, 32 degrees is where water freezes or zero degrees Celsius. Here's room temperature, about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And up here, normal body temperature. 98 degrees Fahrenheit and you can use these to um, keep track of what the temperature is every day and so I want to challenge you to take a look at the um, worksheet that's attached nearby in the link and try to take a look at the weather every day now I know you might not have some of these water tools but um, your cell phone can tell you and also the weather uh, on the news can tell you so you can check with there every day tell the high and the low temperature how much it's rained 
if it's cloudy or clear, um, different observations that you can see. And you can learn a lot about the, even if you just look at the size of the clouds every day. Maybe one day they're nice and thin, and then the next day they're a little bit puffier, and the next day they're getting puffier throughout the day. You might know it might be going to rain in the next couple hours. So, hope you have fun outside checking out the weather. Have a good day.